I'm beginning to think this so-called compostable wrapper is about as compostable as these bricks. Hello again, and you'll have noticed that one of the trays is missing from the worm tower. I've taken the tray that was underneath this working tray now, and I've harvested the compost from it, and I'm not going to be putting it back because I'm winding this tower down. So before we have a look at the compostable wrapper, let's just have a little look at the vermicompost that I harvested. So I got two container loads of vermicompost, but you can see it was extremely wet, very muddy. And all I've done with this is that this would be very, very difficult to sift. It's, it's far too wet. You couldn't. It would just simply uh, ball up. So all I've done is I've basically left it here. This was, I think, around the third week in August. And this is sometime in September. I'm not sure when. But it's a, it's a few weeks later anyhow. And as you can see, having done absolutely nothing to it except left it so it could get plenty of air, it's becoming nice and crumbly and it's dried out quite a lot. And what's going on here is within the composting process you have thermophilic, mesophilic bacteria, the thermophilic working at the hottest end, then mesophilic in the mid-temperature ranges, and you have the psychrophilic bacteria working when the compost has really cooled down. So in other words this compost, this vermicompost is continuously breaking down even though I'm not doing anything to it and in the process of doing that it's becoming much more crumbly and much softer. So this is towards the end of October and you'll recognize this if you saw the, my video on overwintering the chili plants because this is the same vermicompost now that I've used and you can see it's nice and crumbly there. That was mixed in with the uh, mix I made up f to overwinter the plants. But it's very loose, very friable. And here we are today. This is what remains. This is the 4th of November. So from whenever this was harvested in August until now, I've done nothing to it except left it in the container and it's become lovely and loose, lovely and friable. It's dried out a lot, so it's ready to use. And I'm actually going to be using this to pot on some strawberry runners. I've got that video coming out in a few days, probably around the weekend. Now, one of the questions that sometimes comes up is how wet should your vermicompost be? This is the moisture level I like, I like to keep it at, which is you can form a ball with it. If you take up a lump and you squeeze it in your hand, it'll make the shape of your fist and it'll hold that shape. But as soon as you touch it, it falls to pieces. So I just go by feel. Once that's what the vermicompost is doing, that's about the right moisture level for me. And I don't want it to get very much drier than that because the microbes and bacteria that will continue to live in this and make it really good stuff for the plants, they need moisture and they need oxygen. So that's that. Let's crack on now and have a look at the compostable wrapper. So this is, again, sometime in September. I'm not exactly sure when, but it's, it's a, probably about two weeks after the last update. And we're just going to take a look now and see if there's any discernible difference in the wrapper. We've harvested the last of our corn, so a lot of the corn cobs have gone into the compost, which the worms love. So the worms are very much enjoying the corn. But let's take a quick, let's find the wrapper and have a look at what's happening with that. And I'm a bit surprised at how wet it is. It'll be drawing out moisture from the corn cobs and there were some carrot tops thrown in there, but not an awful lot of produce really. So I'm a bit surprised at how wet it is. There's the wrapper. Let's have a look. Now I think the last update that I did was sometime around the middle of August. So in comparison, no. Very little has changed. The only thing that I'm noticing is it's not as rubbery. And that was the same at the last update. So when I pull it, it will um, tear, it'll come apart much easier. So the elasticity, you see that tears really easy. The elasticity which this wrapper had is pretty much gone. But outside of that, you see how easily that tears. But outside of... Um, the change in the elasticity of the wrapper, there's uh, 
not really any evidence of it breaking down at all. So I'm just going to put that back and we'll come and have a look at it in another couple of weeks. So that was sometime in September. This is today. Now you can see there's been there's a lot of evidence of the worms going on little nighttime adventures. There's casts all over the roof and the sides of this worm tower on the outside. And what I did when I was uh, due to my absence because of health reasons to keep this tower going and make sure the worms didn't go hungry. Look at the amount of casts that's on the roof there. I added some horse manure which they love and it'll take them a little while to break down and it, that the horse manure won't be adding much of any moisture to the bin. It's much better than adding a whole pile of unprocessed food scraps. That's what the surface looks like. They've been very happy in the manure but there is a lot of evidence of escapees now for whatever reason they're leaving the bin it's not because there's anything wrong with the bin there will always be worms that try to escape and this lives outside it's it's at the moment it's sitting in the cheap and nasty plastic greenhouse and it sits on in there because this can't be left outside uncovered because of the way it's made water will get in no problem and we've been having rain every single day almost almost non-stop for the last two and a half three weeks so it could be that the worms are reacting to a, the change in atmospheric pressure because of the rains that we've been having. I put some corn on the cob into the wrapper last time. So the worms are enjoying the corn on the cob, which is breaking down nicely. But as you can see, once again, almost no difference whatsoever in this compostable wrapper. Now I think the comments at the from the first video when I started this little experiment were correct and it's it's as I pretty much suspected as well. This will break down but it needs heat to do so. So this wouldn't look anything anything like this if I had put it into a large hot compost pile. I'm pretty sure it would have broken down by now because for it to be advertised as compostable anything that claims to be compostable it has to break down within a certain number of days into pretty much unrecognizable pieces in the soil and clearly this is not doing that I think it's 90 days I'm not sure I'd have to remind myself but yeah I think within 90 days or going through a certain number of hot cycles in the composting process it must be pretty much unrecognizable for it to be for, for the claim to be made that it's compostable so I think definitely it, whenever this was um, verified it was done so in a, in a probably in an industrial composting plant rather than a home comp composting plant even though the claim is you can put this into your home compost pile and it will break down now it probably will sometime around the time we have a colony living on Mars but uh, it's certainly not going to do it anytime soon in the worm tower. So I think I'm going to leave it at that. I th this has been running now for about three months. I'll flash up the exact time. And apart from losing the elasticity, there really is almost no difference. So there's no way that you could claim that this, com this will compost down, certainly not rapidly or easily in a worm bin. And what I'm planning to do is wrap up this worm tower. I think the next video I make will be a sort of a review of how I found using the worm tower. And then I've got worm bin I want to make, which was, it's along the lines of the, um, uh, what is it called? Is it vermi bag? I've seen a lot of people using these now and with very good reviews. And I thought I'd have a go at making my own vermi bag type worm bin. So that will be coming up next. I think the, yeah, the next video now, I think for the worm tower will just be some thoughts and comments on using it, the pros and cons, what I liked and what I didn't like. And then I'll just leave this quietly running in the corner, feeding it every now and then, making sure the worms are happy. And the next major worm series of videos will be on making a, a much larger worm bin, a homemade uh, vermi bag type worm bin. And we'll run a few little experiments with that and see how the worms get on. Okay, so I'm going to just put the wrapper back 
I'll do one final update when I come to do the review of the worm tower and how I found it just to see if it looks any different but that will be in a couple of weeks time and I think my money is safe if I say I'm going to bet that it's, it's not going to look any different but it, I'm going to leave it there so this like I said this worm tower will continue to be fed quietly in the background and the worms will carry on quietly doing their thing and I'll carry on quietly harvesting the vermicompost but when I notice any major change in that wrapper I'll just do another quick follow-on video just as a kind of an update okay but that really is it for now and for the compostable wrapper I can't really say it was disappointing because uh, I didn't really expect anything else really but I found it interesting nonetheless and I hope you did too so as always, thanks for watching. Bye for now.